Hello YouTube family, James Green, short series shenanigans. Gonna go show you a little bit. Everyone was asking about the new pickup, or new to me. So that the sun doesn't blow it out. We'll kind of give you a little panning view here and then I'll walk do a quick walk around. 69 F250 Camper Special. Now this is gonna be going away and this is actually for sale. Uh, the guy bought the pickup from, he owns it. $500 takes that insert. That needs to go. That needs to find a home. So if you're here local to me, here in Albuquerque, and of course this is like, what, May 2017, because this video is going to be on the internet for a while, that needs to go. Contact me, eagledustoff37 at gmail.com. So, <clears throat> big work in progress, because I've got a lot of stuff I'm going to do to this. She's going to get fixed up. <clears throat> I'm going to be building the motor for it. That's what I've talked about. I'll kind of give you guys a walk around. It's already had... Uh, a lot of work done to it as far as some other modifications but it's got a lot more to be done um, got the motor out of it I'm not gonna lift the hood up we're gonna change the windshield probably doing a cab change don't know yet <clears throat> got a couple other vehicles me and the buddy I did the trade deal with donor vehicles so we've got a lot of stuff we can do with it I'm gonna show you guys here nice bright New Mexico day so yeah the camper special F-250, all that's going to get cut out and replaced. Um, the gauge cluster is going to get changed out because I guess it's a big thing to put the F-600 gauges in. I'm going to go back with the original. Um, all this is going to get redone. Seat's going to be recovered. All that good stuff. It's getting nice and bright out here, as you can see. Um, so, yeah, I kind of laugh when I see this here. <clears throat> this hitch that might have been okay back in the day. This is not going to stay uh, matter of fact <laughs> uh, I'm gonna cut those bolts off. Uh, this isn't gonna stay. This is gonna come off now I am gonna keep this original style bumper here just because I like it I've got a tailgate and all the hardware. So yeah, this needs to come out Or that is gonna come out. It's for sale. Go ahead and bring you guys in and I'll close the garage door so it doesn't wash out the <clears throat> The video here guys over here by the toolbox all right and the garage door is closed all right there so <clears throat> this is I guess if you want to call it the first official video of my buddy rebel his barber chair leg odyssey that I'm on so because that's what this video is going to be about now I'm not going to show all the machining on it because there's a lot of machining there's blacksmithing, and I'm going to discuss what we got going on. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me get the camera down here a little bit. So what it is, because he brought me some parts. Um, this is a 1950s Takata Belmont barber chair. So uh, this is the piece. I've showed some stuff on it on social media. This actually goes down the left-hand side. I've got both left and right pieces. Uh, what had happened was, and I've already started working on this one. I've got the other one over there, actually. Yeah, it's over there out of the way. But, so, this actually broke because I've, ha I've got pictures. They're not out there anymore. So, this is, he's taking these to several machine shops <clears throat> here locally in Albuquerque over the last, from what he told me, three or four years. And they're like, oh, yeah, 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 we can do it. And then some time goes by and they're like, yeah, we don't want to mess with it. Come pick your shit up. Um, it's a cast iron steel of 1950s vintage. So this actually goes down a little way and then bends out 90 and comes out approximately this far. Okay. And that is where, because what fits right here, okay, now if I'll show you, that fits there. That's where your leg rests. Okay, if you're in a barber chair and there's padding. So this is all going to get re-chromed and everything, but it fits there. Okay, and then it goes down and here's the foot piece um, that it'll actually, once this fits onto the piece that goes down, that's supposed to attach to, actually, let me get backwards. So it'll go down and attach to the side of this and this is where the foot rest is. So. <clears throat> There are no pieces available. I, so I'm building this off of pictures I found on the internet and having to determine dimensions. So we started out with some cold roll, wide stuff. Um, 
I talked in last week's video, or the video before this, when <clears throat> Sunny Shenanigans, it was cast steel parts, or cast iron, whatever, from a different barber chair that broke. TIG welding it, silicon bronze, that's what we're going to do to this. So, because this one, it already broke right here, and so they cut the other one off the same. So we're recreating, and I've already started pulling all the chrome off. And so I'm making the piece straight first. I've already started with one, and it's a lot of handwork involved. So you guys saw me milling this stock down to thickness, okay? And we've already started profiling um, because I've still got to come back, and I'm, this is a bunch of, we've got, <clears throat> so we're going off of pictures We've got the width and everything because it's the same as here. I've got to determine how far down and out and I'm even going to try to do some research here to see if I can find a chair similar to this and look at it so I know to get everything close. Um, here's the other one. I've already started milling the sides down to get the profile as you can see. Um, I am actually going to mill out and it's a 7 16 slot down the center. Uh, I am going to mill out a bunch in the back here to lighten this up okay so it's not as heavy uh, what we're gonna do and I'll discuss it a little bit and then we'll start with some machining <clears throat> is I'm going to whittle this down you know take some stuff out because at some point I have to come down here and create a bend okay a 90 degree bend and of course the end of this is actually I went ahead and milled all the way through it because it's still an unknown. I may have to, I'm making these longer than what I need. So once I determine, after I get everything bent and everything, once I de decide how far out that step needs to be, I can come in here and cut it off. And then because this should have this that goes around the end, that's just a matter of, you know, fill it in with some filler metal, blend it out and get all this done. And then it's going to, this is all going to be chromed. Um, I am going to pull some material out of the back so it'll make it lighter, easier to bend. A lot of work to do, milling work. Uh, I'll probably go back in here with the back of a ball mill. Um, <clears throat> don't know if we have time for today's video, but I'm just going to talk you through it, show you what we got. Um, so at this point, all we're going to have to do, uh, because this was a cast item, <clears throat> is we're going to come back up in here and I'm, you can see where I, so there was actually a piece right across here and I've cut it out and I've just started you know cleaning it out getting all the chrome all the rust everything off we're gonna come in here I'm gonna dress this up uh, because I want to fit this up in here quite a ways I would like to come up in here at least this far okay and in and work it and we're that way I have a good so we're not going to do a butt weld we're going to come in here I want this to come up in here as far as possible I'm thinking about this should be far enough uh, and, and we're going to V it out and I'm going to weld in and around back here and we still got to have room for all that to fit um, so when we weld everything is going to be below this level here and we got to fit it in of course we're going to weld prep and uh, all we have to do at this point is, because of how it sets, because this is the front, is I got to figure out how far down it needs to come. Okay, and we're going to have to do a little bit of shape and not much. But from the pictures I can tell, it comes down about three and a half, four inches, and then it turns at a 90 degree. And I've got to figure, and it's kind of, I've found a few photos uh, that are really, really good that I can pull up and, and estimate because I know I've got this. I know the dimensions, I know what it is distance from this hole to this, or they show this on here. And so what I'm actually doing is using, um, which it's a good thing because <clears throat> they show this piece and I know how long this piece is. There's a lot of detective work. So what I'm actually doing is, how I've, how I've determined that I'm gonna do it right now, is I know this piece is that long. For example, I'll just grab a tape measure here for, so this piece there is approximately, you know, two and a quarter inches. So if I know this is, is two and a quarter from that, I can deduce how much further down I need to go and then how much further out. So a lot of neat detective work. Um, I'm really enjoying the project. I can see where a shop, all they do is 
they want to just throw it in the machine and get it out. This involves number one, time going on the internet. So I guess if you're doing CNC stuff, that would be design time. <clears throat> like Keith Finner says, it's computer animated, <laughs> cartoon animated drawing, literally. Um, so I'm enjoying it, great stuff. Uh, having to figure it out, you know, I've been working this sped up the build on the anvil as well too, you guys. I'll kind of give you an update on that. Sorry about that. So, <clears throat> I got a little bit more to do, but we need to have that anvil heavy. Uh, and all this stuff is going to get moved around and I got to do some more work. Uh, having this thing heavy like it is, and I've still got to put my gussets in here. I had not done that yet. And everyone's beating me up on the casters. They're like, those casters... Uh, those are actually pretty good casters. They're rated for 500 pounds a piece, but I'm not going to be beating on it. There's going to be some jack legs that come out and go down that actually, when I get ready to hammer on the anvil, those will take the brunt and not the ball bearings in the caster. So I have thought about that. But So right now, that thing is between 400 and 450 pounds. It is a monster, monster, which we're going to need that when we do this heating and a beating on these things because we're going to be firing up the torch. <clears throat> the rosebud, we're going to have some stuff clamped out here, and depending on, because I'm going to try to heat them both at the same time, and so, <clears throat> you know, we've got to do some, got to do some work here, so that's what we got going on, lots of neat stuff, uh, you know, I'm trying to think, I know there's been several things I've been talking about, i got a lot of irons in the fire, so lots of meat to take out, I'm going to put you guys... I don't think the camera will wash it out too bad. I'll set you guys over here and we'll go ahead and get started and we'll do a little machining because we've got a little time. Sorry about that. You guys know me live and unedited. So yeah, giving our guys at American Rotary a shout out here. We're loving our rotary phase converter. <clears throat> if you guys and gals want a three phase piece of equipment, get an American Rotary phase converter. What's nice about them, you guys, if you've watched my videos, you know. Uh, not like the old ones that eat up cell phones and video cameras, excuse me, they're great. And you'll hear it. And remember, my camera, the microphone on here, picks up everything. Like if you watch some of my other videos, you can hear my hot water heater light up. It goes whoosh. So it's got a really, really good microphone. So as a disclaimer, I like putting that out there. Things on the camera sound louder than they actually are. So, you know, this is a, everyone asks me, it's a Canon Viaxa, uh, I forget what exactly model, but uh, it, I got it at Costco uh, a couple years ago. Well, about five years ago now. So they've got new ones out, they're great. So <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and continue with what we got. We have a 7 two flute end mill. I'll get you guys zoomed in a little bit and we'll see some mill in action here get you over sorry about that right there all right two flute end mill just pull these out and clean out our from behind it here real quick and we're going to run some flood coolant and the depth of cut on our groove what I've determined is about 75 thou deep so So we're going to be running flood coolant and all that good stuff. Now, the other one hanging out, I was trying to set up uh, jacks on the end because I was worried about vibration. But I'm moving slow enough and this stuff is still thick enough and we're not taking a real heavy cut. I didn't have uh, vibration issues. So I was worried about that and it's cold roll. We're centered up. We should still be centered up. And uh, I didn't have a 7 16 end mill holder. So I've got an ER32 collet in here. I love the ER32 stuff. It's an R8 to ER32. And uh, it is my go-to setup um, as far as, you know, you want to hold something straight other than in an R8 collet. And it's quick to change in and out to just the collet. Even though I've got a complete set of R8 collets, um, I know these things are tight and right as rain. And... Uh, you know, instead of having to do the draw bar in and out a lot, 
with the power draw bar and you want to do some quick changes, this is another option here. It just puts you the R8 to ER32 call it setup and it works great, works phenomenal. So we're in. Let's go ahead and back up here. I get set up. Part in the head. Now I know this bar is not straight because when I was milling it down, when you take a piece of material and I had it on its side, it actually warped a little. Not a big deal because this stuff's going to get bent anyway and there's a lot of hand fas fashioning. You can see when I milled this out, we ended up really thick on this end because the bar actually bowed this way because this was the side when we cut off. Not worried about it because even if this end's kind of goofy, this is this is the end that's going to be out here that I'll probably end up cutting off because it'll be too long. So not worried about it. That's the nice thing about this project. And doing something like this is there's there's nothing that's hard, fast, exact. We're creating a part out of solid metal to attach to a cast part and cast parts aren't super exact. There's a lot of room for give and take. So that's, you know, there's a lot of aspects to this build. It's challenging. It's nothing simple, nothing easy that you can just throw in a computer, uh, a CNC machine and just punch buttons and whip it out and you're done. It takes, we're doing, uh, we're doing machining. We're going to be doing blacksmithing. You know, so it's a lot of great areas of metalworking in general. I'm going to line over here and use my eyeball to get this centered up here just because for general purposes. Yep, we're still good with that. And we're just going to let it run across. And I know it's not going to line up where I want it to down here, but this is the end. I made these this extra long on purpose. We're probably going to be three or four inches extra long, which is fine. That way, in the process of the making and the bending and whatever, I know I'm going to cut some off. I did that on purpose. I didn't want to try to make this two size and whatever. And we've got more material, so in case something goes wrong and, you know, we scrap apart, we've got more stuff we can do. So let me go ahead and get my plug to my wheel in here. What do you want to try to start? So first, we'll call that there. All right. We're going to balance 75 thou. Take this to zero. Phase converter. 660 RPM. And got this locked in. Speeding up the flow so it washed the chips out of the way. Yep. There we go. Cruising right along. Enjoying this project, um, you know, it's going to put all your skills to test. But 
I kind of think it's funny that he took this to several machine shops here in uh, Albuquerque and they're like, yeah, we can't do that. That just shows that the old skilled tradesmen that knew how to do this stuff aren't working in the shop anymore, you know. All you have is people that know how to push buttons and that's it. You know, he wasn't worried about price, he wanted it built. But, you know, what does that say about the caliber individuals we have in the workforce nowadays? You know, it's not something simple, straightforward. They can drop in, do it, and pop it out. You know, this is the type of stuff old job shops used to do. So we're actually getting some pretty good chips out of this. We'll let her run across. And I know you, I don't show a whole lot of machining like this. You know, because it's just a boring straight across cut. I'll back you guys up a little bit here. You can see about how fast we're feeding. With the feed rate here. You can figure out inches a minute. I go by the sound of my machine, the material, the tool. That's kind of how I was taught. Pull these back a little so we get a little flood feeling out. Yeah. Draining good. But yeah, this is uh, this is the other piece we started on. I just started around in the end, you know. I know I'm probably gonna have to cut this off, but uh, I like this because it's whittling and metal. Now I decided what I am gonna do on the back here because we don't want this solid. Um, is I, I, what I am going to do is I'm probably going to come in with a ball end mill and uh, take a lot of this out. And depending on how much time we have on the video, well, we may not. But, uh, you know, actually, you know what, guys? I'll do another video because as soon as I get done here, I'm going to flip these over and we'll show running the ball. So that we might as well. I mean, it's hard to build. So we'll, we'll run a ball end mill in another video across the back kind of figure out what size we need and I'll do that off camera show some neat stuff it's all part of getting the project done yeah I'm real I'm really excited about this getting to use the big anvil in the back here um, yeah I got a dresser up but uh, so this is going to be the first project that I get to use the uh, we're still trying to think of a name for the anvil. I had a buddy of mine give me a name. And uh, we're thinking about calling it the Big Mama Jamma. That just kind of, but then that song gets stuck in your head. It's Big Mama Jamma. And that song gets stuck in your head the rest of the day. You're welcome. I'll zoom you guys in a little bit here. turn the coolant pump off. 
Keep unplugging. So yeah, we'll stop there because the pictures I've seen, uh, the, uh, for example, you know, we'd probably come out here that I've seen online, and I'll, and I'll, I'll print some out and show you guys. Uh, that it actually stops there, and then this is cut and rounded. So we know we've got that. We're going to pull this out. We're going to change, end up changing all this out. Another tool. We're going to pull this and flip it. Let's see how much time we got. About five minutes. All right. I'm not going to do the tool change right now, but I have not forgot. Since I got a little time here, I did want to show some viewer appreciation mail. So. Huge, huge, huge thank you to, and I don't want to show you his address, from Danny Stakely. Danny Stakely contacted me several months ago and says, hey, James, can I get your address? I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, I get emails all the time, and I, sh I always show the viewer, viewer appreciation mail. Pardon, my nose is itching. So I had no idea what Danny Stakely was going to send me, and I am blown away. I went through and already packaged it up uh, so they wouldn't dry out here in New Mexico. He sent me a huge giant box full. The wife and I went through and we put them in Ziploc bags of Sharpie markers. I have Sharpie markers all shapes, sizes, colors, rainbows and the reason I put them in the bags because here in New Mexico if you don't keep your Sharpie markers uh, closed up they'll dry out. Plus, I have a lot of Sharpie markers. I mean, those are the Jumbos. And then all the other ones, the different colors, neon, Sharpie. Uh, he even sent me a bunch of small uh, clicker pencils, mechanical pencils. So I have got mechanical pencils. I've got copper or bronze Sharpies. And I'm loving this stuff because I use, it's, I'm using Sharpies all the time on stuff. And sadly, they dry out in New Mexico before I can use them all. So, and then some other Sharpies, highlighters. I mean, super big, huge thank you. And these are double tipped Sharpies. So, again, Danny Stakely from Maryville, Tennessee. Big shout out to you, Danny. Awesome, awesome, greatly appreciated. Um, so that's why if you guys have Sharpies and you have a bunch of them and you don't want to, you put them in as I've learned, put them in a Ziploc bag. They'll last a lot longer. Pull them out when you need them. So again, huge shout out and thank you. Loving the Sharpie gift, especially with what I got going on. You can, instead of using Dicom all the time, depending on what you got going on. And if you're colorblind, you know, I'm not, but I know some of my buddies are. Uh, certain colors show up better, or if you want to make a mark for this color and a mark for that so that you don't accidentally machine past it, I know I do that. I'll use different colors to mark things so that I know this is a measurement point, or you cut here, or you don't cut here, or you machine here, you don't machine there. So having those colors, that's handy. So there you go. Uh, showing some machine work. First video of repairing the 1950s Takata Belmont barber chair legs. So lots of great stuff. Again, huge shout out to American Rotary and All Industrial Tool Supply, you guys, www.allindustrial.com. Uh, that's where I get all my uh, end mills and stuff from nowadays. Uh, cutting inserts, flu uh, fluid, I mean, you name it, they've got it. Call them. Uh, I know they've got uh, Discounts going on right now until the end of June 2017. Register on their website. Lots of good deals going on. Depending on how much and what you get, uh, there can be some really, really big discounts. So there you go. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all my new subscribers and those that have been with me since day one. I greatly appreciate it. Um, like I always say at the end of every video, and I truly do mean it because I do this stuff out here after I've taken care of family, mom, wife, myself, and local veterans in the community. Take care of yourself and take care of your family. Because remember, at the end of the day, you and your family is all you got. Until next time, you guys, get out in the garage and uh, <laughs> use a lot of Sharpies. I know I'm going to be having fun. You're going to see lots of them coming up. Thanks again. Appreciate it. Till next time. And we're going to show you some more machining with a ball end mill in the next video. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.